Should you go for the CCNA CyberOps or the CCNA Security Certification? Let's talk about that. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Network Chuck. Welcome to another Monday. Today we're going to start off this week right. We're going to start it off with just a ton of energy and motivation. I'm excited for the week. I want to start falling in love with Mondays. I'm hoping you will start to fall in love with Mondays. Today we're going to answer the question of what is the CCNA CyberOps? What is CCNA Security? Why are there two different certs that seem to kind of talk about the same things? Security. In what situation would you go for CyberOps and which one would you go for security? We're going to explore those options. This is actually a question I got from someone on the video last week who commented. Let's check it out. It was from Fernando. Great video. He wants to know the difference between CCNA security and CCNA cyber. And he meant ops, not cybersecurity. We're going to answer that. Before we jump into it, let's get a little bit of motivation going here. Uh, this week's episode on This Is IT is up and running. We um, had another part to the Stuart interview from DevNet. And he talked about something really cool with extreme ownership. If you're familiar with that Jocko Willinet guy, I, don't, I forget his, how you say his last name, but he has this book called Extreme Ownership. And basically, it's all about taking ownership of your life, everything in your life. Stop making excuses as to why things aren't happening for you. Uh, you might be like, oh, well, I can't get my CCNA because I don't have the time or my job is too crazy or I, I'm too tired at the end of the day. No, no, no. Stop making excuses. Start taking ownership. Own your life. Own your IT career. And that's what Stuart talks about. He's adopted this lifestyle, this mindset to everything he's done. And now he's working at Cisco and Cisco DevNet. He's presenting at Cisco Live. This guy is insane. So here's a clip. Check it out. And, and Jocko, if you guys don't know who Jocko is, I'll put a link up here, throw it on the screen, or David will. David's going to be editing this. Um, he's this guy who talks about ownership and, and discipline and just owning your life and your environment. Uh, how do you apply that to being a network engineer? How do you apply that to automation? And how do you apply it to your own life and your own learning? That's a lot of questions, so go. No. Yeah, I think, you know, <laughs> so yeah, I, you know, I read through that and I thought, you know what, he's right. Um, and I've always been fairly disciplined. Um, especially when it comes to learning something, I'm able to, you know, carve out that time whenever that is, you know, whether I have to get up early in the morning or whether I have to stay up at night, you know, like, you know, training for studying for my CC CCNA and things is, you know, I would do two or three hours reading at night. I would have audio on in the car. I had, um, it was Scott Morris did the um, CCIE audio. And that might seem a little bit of a, you know, a, a jump for a CCNA sort of, you know, engineering things. But to see the rest of the interview, click the link below. And don't forget to subscribe to This Is IT. We got tons of cool stuff coming. Um, this week, actually, we have uh, Bart Castle. He is an AWS expert. And uh, when I say expert, he has... I think he has almost every single AWS certification except for the advanced networking. He's about to take that one. He has every one of them. So he has a ton of insight. We talked about AWS till we're blue in the face. So that's coming up this week. We also interviewed Anthony Sequira, and we'll be interviewing Jason Gooley, the godfather of network programmability uh, on Friday, which will be coming up in a few weeks for you to see. So it's just a ton of stuff coming out. It's so exciting. And let us know what you think. Comment below, comment on This Is IT. Don't forget to subscribe, but we got it on Spotify and and uh, iTunes. Sorry, I'm a little hyped up. It's I'm trying to get stoked for Monday. Anyways, uh, let's talk about some news. What's going on in networking? What's go going on in Cisco and everything else? I think the big thing right now, uh, and since we're talking about security and cybersecurity, uh, the RSA conference was last week or the week before, I forget, and uh, some new things have come out, um, specifically Google. You know, Google is owned by their parent company called Alphabet, which it just sounds scary because I think Alphabet pretty much owns the world, owns everything, and um, they have another company called Chronicle. I was actually just reading an article about it just now, but uh, it's this new uh, tool for analyzing network telemetry and alerts and events. Uh, basically, it stores unlimited data. So everything happening in your network so from every little syslog from your router or switch is sent to Chronicle. And, I, and that's also including firewall information. So your Palo Altos and your ASAs, all that data, all that telemetry. If, if, you've, if you go to it and you enable all the logs, logs for days. It crashes your stuff. But you can send all that stuff to this 
a uh, new product they have called Backlog. I think it's called Backlog. What was it called? Backstory. It's called Backstory. You can store unlimited data, unlimited logs. And it's supposed to be this huge AI-driven, machine learning-driven thing to spit out the information you care about to help you identify uh, security breaches and things going on in your network. Now, yeah, a lot of the vendors out there already have stuff like this. Cisco has stuff like this. They have a, their StealthWatch product, which will look at all this data. Um, Palo Alto has some stuff. But uh, Google coming to the arena here to do something like that. I mean, Google's kind of good at indexing. It's good at search. It's good at analyzing what you want. I mean, they know what you want to search for even before you start typing it in. So, I mean, Google knows all. I mean, you probably started watching this video because Google told you to. <laughs> so, I mean, they're, they're calling the shots already. So, they might as well help us out with our network security. It just makes sense. And another one I'm reading about, it's the, uh, the NSA. Ever heard of these guys? <laughs> um, they came out with a tool, uh, and they're, they're actually releasing their tool they use to uh, reverse engineer malware. And it's a tool called... Uh, Gidra, I think I've seen that. It's like G-H-I-D-R-A. They're releasing it as an open source project so all you security gurus can use this tool to reverse engineer malware, figure out how it ticks, and make sure we stop all malware in the future. Well, not all malware, that's impossible, but we can start to understand the evilness of it, the, the dirt, the, the nastiness of it. So both of those tools released at the RSA, which are the I think the two biggest ones they announced, uh, let me know if you actually went to RSA or you uh, were following RSA and there's some new things coming out and you thought it was awesome, let me know below. Um, keep me informed, I wanna know. Um, but I think it's cool because the certification we're about to talk about, the cybersecurity certification, the CCNA Cyber Ops is what it's called, um, that's something you would probably end up using as a security operations analyst, working in a security operations center, <laughs> the SOC or the SOC. Now let's get down to business. The CCNA security versus the CCNA Cyber Ops certification. What's the big difference? Now, I looked at the exam topics, and for the most part, they're pretty similar. Now, the, the first big thing is the requirements before each exam. If you want to go for the CCNA security, the requirements, just like any other CCNA track, you need the CSENT, the CCENT, the Cisco Certified Entry Level Network Technician, blah, big, big words, or a long phrase. You need that to get you uh, all the base networking knowledge you'll need to succeed, and the, those very specific certs, so like collaboration, uh, security, uh, data center. But the cyber ops is different, and it's so weird. You don't need the CSENT for this. There actually are no requirements to start going down the cyber ops path. It's two exams, it's required that you take those two exams, and then you're good. No prereqs required to start that journey. Okay, that's strange by itself. Um, that means, though, that one of those exams, so if I look at it, this is the first exam here, the 210-250, the Cybersecurity Fundamentals, or you'll see it abbreviated as SECFND, SECFND, Security Fundamentals. You'll notice the first big section of the exam topics is actually over network concepts, but it's definitely leaning more towards the security um, aspects of uh, networking. And then it jumps into security concepts. It really hones in on the cryptography and then like host-based analysis, like HIPS kind of stuff monitoring and attack methods. I mean, it goes through a lot of stuff, and that's just the first exam. And here's the second exam, which is the 210-255. Sick ops is what it's referred to as. And it goes even deeper into like computer forensics. It shows you how to uh, really analyze and uh, kind of correlate uh, attacks. So you can, you know, look at a bunch of data and, and kind of figure out things. And it also covers uh, incident response, and you're learning about all the, the compliance frameworks, like the PCI and SOX and HIPAA, which if you don't know what those are, you definitely will if you go down the security track and cyber ops specifically. Uh, but it's basically looking at a ton of security data and learning to recognize when bad things are happening. And then, of course, incident handling is a pretty big one. Now, the CCNA security, again, it does require either the CSENT or CCNA routing and switching or any CCIE to go into it to be able to take that exam. And it's just one exam. Now, let's take a look at those exam topics. You'll kind of, you'll see a big difference. Well, I say a big difference. It's not too crazy. This is the 210-260, the I-C-N-S-E. <laughs> um, if you go through, I mean, we, we have some of the same stuff. We're skipping over the network concepts because you already got that in the uh, CSENT. And you'll notice it, it kind of has a, some CCNA feel talking about WAN technologies. And you'll see some topic overlap, but it's missing a bunch of the cryptography stuff. Uh, it's missing a lot of the incident handling, incident response stuff. And it doesn't go into too much detail about uh, attacks. I mean, we'll, we'll cover layer two attacks and um, some mitigation procedures. 
Uh, it really focuses on the firewalls and how to implement Cisco firewalls and such and different uh, endpoint securities. The main difference is what these certifications are preparing you for, what job role for. The CCNA security, you're going to be, I mean, it's it's going to be similar, actually. So, I mean, CCNA security, you're going to be like an admin, a network security admin. You're going to be going in. You, you'll be like entry level, right? Um, and you're kind of gearing up for the CCMP security. Uh, whereas the cyber ops, you're more for like, it's it's more... A specific job role. You're gonna be the guy in front of a lot of monitors, kind of looking at data, watching things happen, and and analyzing uh, event logs and such. And you're trying to correlate data and figure out when attacks are happening, if attacks are happening. And you're typically gonna be working with you know large companies or maybe a company that manages a lot of companies. So it's a very specific job role. Whereas the CCNA security again is more for like an admin role. Now I think the CyberOps has a lot of fantastic information that really is going to benefit you in any security type role. But the question still remains: Should you go for the CyberOps or should you go for security? And many of you may not like this answer, but I'm going to say you should go for the CCNA security. Um, I would pass up the CyberOps for now. For now. And let me explain why. Right now, the CCNA CyberOps is as far as you can go down that track. There is no CCMP CyberOps. And we don't know if there's a plan to do so. And Cisco's done this before with other tracks, like uh, like the CCNA Industrial Certification. Uh, there's no CCMP Industrial, and it's been around for a while. Um, I don't think they're going to make a CCMP track for CyberOps. Now, I could be wrong. You could be watching this video when it already is out, and you're like, Chuck, you're totally wrong. Cisco is going to produce certifications that um, have high demand. Now, you get your certification for two reasons. One, to gain the knowledge. That's probably the biggest reason. Uh, very close behind that is, number two, the marketability. You want to be able to put that certification on your resume, on your LinkedIn, so that recruiters and jobs can find you, so you can get these amazing jobs you want. Now, I did a quick job search and I found that uh, looking for CCNA cyber ops, it actually does show up in searches. So jobs are looking for people with CCNA cyber ops certifications. Uh, however, it'll say CCNA cyber ops or CCNA security or CCMP security or security plus. So yes, the cyber ops is a valuable certification. So if you have it, it's gonna only add value to you. However, if you're going down the path of becoming a security professional and maybe you want to work in a security operations center, you want to be that guy correlating data, looking at 15 monitors and just being a boss, which is a cool job, I'm not going to lie. But I think the CCNA security will get you to the same place. And you know, I was actually looking at the Security Plus uh, exam objectives, exam topic list, and there's a ton of overlap with the Cyber Ops certification. In fact, the Security Plus covers a lot more. Now, the Cyber Ops might go more in depth with very specific cryptography and, and uh, incident response, incident handling kind of stuff, but it doesn't go as deep as you need it to be to be a really hardcore SOC analyst. The bulk of what you're going to need for the job, you're going to learn on the job. The Cyber Ops is just to get your foot in the door, just to get you familiar with and thinking like a cybersecurity analyst. The benefit of going with the CCNA security is that you can then progress down the path and get your CCNP security and then become a boss and get the CCIE security. So that's a huge benefit. Now you can do both. I mean, nothing's stopping you from doing both. Get the CCNA security, get the CCNA cyber ops so you have that more cyber ops focus. You can get those you know, side skills. But if it comes down to either or, if it comes down to should I go CCNA security, then hop over to CCNA cyber ops. I, I, I'd still say no. I'd say go CCNA security, then jump right into CCMP security. I also don't like the fact that there's no prerequisites before jumping into CCNA cyber ops. I think, and you probably heard me say this before, I think everyone, everyone should get CCNA routing and switching before going to any other track. That's how it used to be. Uh, Cisco used to have it required that you get the CCNA routing and switching, and then you can go to another track. So for me, I was still you know under that regime. So when I wanted my CCNA voice, I had to get my routing and switching, and then I could go to CCNA voice. That's not the case anymore. All you need is a CSENT to specialize into something else. But I, I think you should go about the old way. You need that CCNA routing switching. Every job you're going to have network related is going to use those core routing concepts. You're going to need those things. So just go for it. It may be the case that cyber ops really, really takes off and that it's such a huge demand in the industry that it's like a required certification to go down that path. That could be the case. But right now, doing job searches, it's an either or scenario. People don't care if you have the security or the CCNA security or the CCNA cyber ops. You're gonna be 
really well off going with either or. Uh, I think you're going to be better off going with CCNA security just because more jobs know about the CCNA security. They may not even know, like recruiters and, and, and CIOs and you know directors, people who will hire you may not even know what the cyber ops certification covers and what that equips you to do. So the CCNA security, tried and true, it's been around for a while, it's gonna show up in job searches, It'll sh you'll show up in job searches when you put that on your resume. And that's just my take on it. That's what I see in the industry, that's that's how I have searched for jobs and applied for jobs and gotten jobs, is just looking at that kind of data. Um, if you know different, please let me know. Give us your insight. Did you get the cyber ops certification and how did that affect your current job role or how did it affect you finding a job what type of job do you have right now? Any SOC people out there? Any security operations center guys? Let me know what the experience is like. Let us know. Add some value to this. It's really, it's an interesting field. It's it's sort of new a little bit. And people have been doing stuff like this for a very long time, but to have a certification focused on just that one job role is, is interesting. Well, anyways, I guess the theme of today was kind of security and cybersecurity and cyber ops. Uh, let me know what you think. And if you're thinking about going for either one of those certifications, uh, I'll list some training resources below to get you started. It's an exciting field. I mean, security is in high demand. Everybody knows that. And you will not be without a job. And that's about it, guys. Uh, today's Monday. Well, it might be Tuesday for some of you because I posted this video late. I'll try to get this video out earlier each week. But let's tackle this week. Let's own this week. What are your certification study goals this week? What are your goals in your job? What are you going to accomplish? How are you going to... How are you going to advance your career this week? Let me know below. There's power in just stating your goals or putting them out there. Um, that way people see it, you're kind of held accountable. Um, I'll see them, I'll comment on them. And uh, just putting it out there makes it more real for you. It makes you feel just a little bit more obligated to accomplish that goal. For me, I'm, I'm studying Azure more this week. I really wanna get into more Python this week. Um, and I'm getting prepped for my talk with Jason Gooley this week. We're going to be talking all kinds of stuff with SD WAN, and we're going to talk some network programmability because he, I don't know if you know this, but Jason Gooley, he works for Cisco, but he's referred to as the godfather of network programmability. He even has a cool sticker on it. Uh, but anyways, that's about it, guys. If you haven't already, subscribe for more of this kind of stuff if you like this. And um, that's about it. I'll catch you guys well, for sure next week, and maybe I'll post a video this week sometime. Who knows? Just stick around. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. Yeah.